Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Orogiri. Now today's video was requested um, in the stream we had when this current event came out uh, about a week or two ago, basically the Lancelot Halloween event. And in the course of that stream I had mentioned, I was looking through the Neon Coral Pond and I saw that we had um, a Magatama Nyan Koropan, basically these that we had before us. Um, you know, the, um, what is it called? Crest Magatama, Axe Spear, plus Mountain Wind Mika, uh, or the Schist, whichever, Aqua Breeze and um, Jade Crest, those mags. Basically, um, this video is going to be concerning my opinions on. Magatamas in the Nyan Koropan. Basically, Nyan Koropan Magatama. So, in that stream, hey Flame, how you doing? In that stream, I expressed that I have a distaste towards um, these kind of Magatamas in the Nyan Koropan. Now, where that distaste, distaste comes from is. comes from two points. So, primarily, I really, really dislike that they're in the Nyan Koropan. Now, like, if these were farmable, I would have no opinion on them whatsoever. They would just be an extra mag, and then I would just look at them as objectively as possible. You know, like, like oh, this is good, this is bad, etc. Yes, no. Um, but, personally... I really don't like that these are Nyan Koropan Magatamas. I don't like that people um, necessarily have to roll for them, have to gamble for them. Because it's not... It doesn't really lie in the fact that I think, oh, everyone should just work hard for everything they should have. No one should get a pass. I'm not trying to take that stance on it at all. I just don't like the I, I, I for one I don't like the idea of them I don't like the fact that there are Magatamas in the Nyan Coral Pond now how does this differentiate themselves from other things right because someone's going to say well Oro why don't you not like Vanguard accessories it's the same thing right like what what's so different man like we roll for vanguards, we roll for accessories, we roll for sublimes, we roll for, you know, this, that, and all, anything in between. What makes the Magatamas different? So, just to address the other thing, so accessories, when accessories first came out, because accessory, vanguard accessories came out way before these did, vanguard accessories, in the beginning, they came with their vanguard. They were a grouped package. They were... If you got a Miyamoto, she came with a Vanguard accessory. The Vanguard accessory gave you 15% attack, extra affinity for some weapons, some elements, some HP. It was awesome. They were, without a doubt, you couldn't go... You couldn't be anyone without accessories at that point. Accessories were... Vanguard accessories were such a must-have addition to the game that they were quintessential. Like, even if you didn't play Sword, even if you already had a Miyamoto at 100, people rolled to get the Miyamoto accessories because you couldn't say no to 30% attack. It was such a stark difference that everyone had to have them. Now, this was, you know, three, four years ago now when the Vanguard accessories first came out. They were essential, essentially. Like, no one could say, well, I mean, the argument could have been made, well, I don't want them because they're pay to win. I agree. However, they occupied their own slot. Thanks, Vane. I appreciate it, my dude. But Vanguard accessories didn't take up an already existing slot, right? So Vanguard accessories went to the accessory slot. And before that, accessories were temporary. They would give you a temporary boost of stats or an effect, crit force, money drop, whatever it was, drop percent. Um, accessories used to come with outfits and we'd roll to get them and we'd have them for a month and it would be great and fun. And they gave us a little boost, but they wore off. 
Vanguard accessories were forever. And we were already kind of, we already understood the accessory meta. Like they were part of the game since the beginning. So accessories weren't a foreign, foreign concept. It was like a, an extra little bonus you got when you rolled. So if you got an outfit you wanted, well, you got an accessory with it. And that's cool that you, you always had the outfit. So then eventually Vanguard accessories now Vanguard accessories are never coupled with Vanguards. They come out in their own unit in the gold lineup. And honestly, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I think they should both be there. Like, they, they should never have been separated. Like, it should be that if... Honestly, it sh that just should just be how it is. Like, if you get a Miyamoto tomorrow, she should come with an accessory. If you get an Oda tomorrow, she should come with an accessory. Every Vanguard should come with their accessory as a part of having them. You know, even if you don't use her, well, I got their accessory. It works really good. It should be like that, but it's not. I don't like that. I don't like that when I wanted my Toshi accessories, it literally costs like uh, 10,000 free to play OC to get two because they were in the gold lineup. And even if I got a gold, it wasn't a guarantee that I was going to get it. Even if I got a Toshi, there was no guarantee I was going to get it. And it's just this, this cesspool of RNG. And the accessories, that's a whole other basket, but it's a similar case. So then after that, I don't know what came first. Was it these kinds of Magatama or Sublimes? But I'm going to talk about Sublimes next. Sublime, uh, Sublime Ogies... They're bad too. They're really bad. Because originally, Ogies was, if you got an Ogi, you could use it on whatever weapon you wanted. And that, that's a problem too, Sam, but welcome. But when we first got Ogies, they, were, they came in an Ogi skills card set. If you got Ogi skill card set one, you got Spirit Blast. You got Spirit Blast for like everything. You got Extend to Geki. You got all this stuff. You know, if you got um, skill card two, that was tight, not tight away, but it was like Eternal Thunder. That was all the stuff. And at the beginning, like Oogie card three was the best because it had tidal wave, thunder beast, you know, all this good stuff. And if you got an Oogie, that meant you could use it. And that's the case. All regular Ogies come like that up to Oogie 20, the Satan Oogie. You get it, you can use it. Now, if at the beginning of the game, now, honest to God, if at the beginning of the game, every Ogi was in an individual slot, if we had 18 Ogies in the in the silver lineup every single time, like, hey, I got an Ogi. What's it for? It's Earth Shattering Sublime for... I got Earth Shattering for Axe. It's like, oh, cool. I'm Bo. I don't care. Like, it would be hell. Ogies would be a luxury. They would be like... A symbol of like resentment being like oh my god I want to get this like, it, it would just not be healthy right like Ogies are in a skill card set and honestly sublimes should be in uh, they should be in skill card sets there should be sublime skill card set one sublime skill card set two three four and five and four and five are coming later for like for to for spear in case people don't know like i'll just say spear as an example so spear gets spirit blast sublime they get tidal wave sublime they get water dragon sublime next is going to be um i want to call it piercing rush but that's not what it's called shadowed strike sublime and then they get whirlwind thrust sublime you know there's five of them in the works we haven't we've only seen three of them but when we get sublimes, they're all like individually categorized. I'm not sure if we have sublimes in our in Uncle Upon right now or not. I don't think we do. We don't. No, we have these Magatamas. In certain ones. Not all of them. Okay. So, yes, I think sublimes should be in... Um, they should be in uh, skill card sets. There's no reason, like, it's very devastating to get a sublime and not being able to use it. You know, it's like, oh my god, I got, I got like, eight sublimes for staff. I don't care. You know, um, Oogie's skill card, one to six in the special gotcha. Yeah, they're in the special gotcha. 
We're, we're in the special gotcha right now, and it's Oogie 1 through 6. It should be the other ones. Like... To put it in perspective, like we were saying a minute ago, about all the Ogies if they weren't in skill card sets, it would be like if every single Ogie here, like there's like what, one, two, three, four, there's set seven to twenty-two. So that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, twelve Ogies times eight. Every individual Ogie was there, like, god damn! That's what it's like rolling for a salon, but much smaller, but that's like a hundred Ogies. And that, that would not fly. No one would ever roll for Ogies. It's not viable. But, um... But yeah, like, I'm not a fan of that either. But there is something different about these Magatums. And I apologize for this video being already 11 minutes in and me talking about everything that's not these mags. I apologize, let's try trying to build some foundation. Um, but really quick, KMC asks the question, can I tell him what the stats are of these Magatamas in the gacha? Yes, because I did some research before I made the video. Um, so this is a Jade Crest Magatama. So you can click on it, and it tells you right here, it's um, 5 purity, 15 chakra, 300 imitation slots, 560 defense, a bonus of one damage is dealt depending on the value of mountain element during a critical hit at a rate of 10%. Damage cap cannot be exceeded. And it gives you 20 mountain. If you're 115, it gives you another mountain. If you're 5 more mountain, if you're 125, it's 10 more. And then it gives you sword affinity, odachi affinity. And the affinity is 5% for whatever it says on the mag. And then it gives you some SP and some extra health. So if you're 125, um, this Magatama will give you... Uh, 35 mountain and 5 affinity that's not too good <laughs> 30 mountain on a mag it's kind of nice but that's a whole mag you know we have ornamentations for that we definitely have a sparrow with double mountain on it to do that um, but realistically no one really uses the base form of these mags they're supposed to be weak um what you do with these magatama after is we talk to kaguya and i'll go talk to kaguya right now oh she's right there i didn't even need to wrap a storm so we talk to kaguya and if your um kaguya's level is high enough i'm not sure if it matters or not she is able to make the final forms of these magatama I think they're colorless. I'm not too sure. There they are. Prodigals, Jade Crest. Yeah. So Jade Crest, Axe Spear. We'll look at it. So Jade Crest, Axe Spear. The, this is the final form of the mod. Or the final form of the Jade Crest. What you need to make it is one Magatama from the Neon Coral Pond. That is the right type. So you need to get the Axe Spear one. Like if you want to make the Axe Spear one, you need the Axe Spear mag. You know, if you want to make the, the mod for it, you got to have the, the right base one. So that means if you can't get a 12.5% chance to get the mag of your type in the Neon Koro Pond that corresponds to your weapon. So basically one out of eight chance, 12.5%. So basically you have to get a, uh, a gold or a silver. I'm not sure what unit it was in. Maybe gold. You have to get a gold ball. And if you get a gold ball, it's a 12.5% chance that it is even for you. So it's like trying to get a, a specific Vanguard, but to a lesser degree. It, it's very similar to getting a, um, very similar to getting uh, the Sublime you want, basically. So after you get one of these things, you it then requires 10 Mountain Wind Schists and 10 Mountain Wind Mika in order to make it into its final form. So, the next question is, how do you get Schists and Mikas? So, when you do roll the Neon Koropon, let's say you do get one of these mags. These little mags will come with either a Schist or a Mika. Let me, let me look at that again. A Schist or a Mika? And they're both mountain? Wait, let, let, me, let me look at that again. Because... 
That doesn't sound right. Is that really how they are? You need a mountain wind schist and a mountain wind Mika. Okay. I, I wanted to make sure they didn't have two different prefixes. So let's go back in our shopping plaza. Young Coral Glen. Remember, you needed 10 of each. Event Ogis are? Some of them. Some of them are, some of them aren't. It definitely depends on which one, Yami, but in some cases, you're correct. So, let's see. Um, limited Fall Magatamas. They are in the gold lineup, so they're gold. So, semi-rare. So let's click on this uh, Jade Crest Axe Spear. It comes with the Mika. Oh my god, it gets worse? Oh. Mountain Wind, Mountain Wind, Mountain Wind. They're all Mountain Wind. Okay. So basically, half of them, this half come with schists. These ones here. So Jade Crest, Jade Crest, Jade Crest, Jade Crest. And then Aqua Breeze, Aqua Breeze, Aqua Breeze, Aqua Breeze. So, it's not a 1 out of 8 chance, like I said, that you get the one for yourself. It's actually a 25% chance. So, 1 out of 4. But, there's 8 in here, so it's still a 1 out of 8 chance that you get the specific one you want. Okay. So, let's say I get one of these. Um, have I ever been to TwitchCon? No, I have not. I've... Uh, I haven't gone to many conventions. I've gone to Anna Maritimes a couple times, but nothing like that. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the Kotanoa, those are very special. Yeah, like, those Oogies are really strong. Absolutely. They're an exception. By all means. That's, we'll get to that in a minute, Sam, by all means, yes. So, but the first step is, you need, you need to get one of these mags. You have to roll, you have to get one. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> it comes with one Mika. So you get one of these, you get a Mika. So if you roll one, you have one Mika. And the game, now unless you're rolling a lot or you're getting very lucky, it's a long road to get 10 of these. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's quite the investment. So you need to get 10 Mikas and 10 Schists, plus the mag you need. Now, that doesn't mean you need to get 10 balls, like two 10 balls, whatever. But basically every mag you get that you're not gonna use, like let's say out of this, I'm only ever gonna use Axe Spear, I'm not gonna use Wand Staff, I'm not gonna use Bow or Sword Odachi. I'm just going to use the Wand Spear one because I'm Spear. Let's say I get a Wand Staff or a Twin Bow. Any of these other mags that I'm not going to use. These aren't tradable, by the way, so there's nothing to do with that. You can break them down and they will give you an additional Mika or a Schist. I've, I'm not sure if, like, if you break down a Mika, if it gives you... Um, I'm not sure if you break down a Mika if it gives you a Schist, or if you break down a Schist if it gives you a Mika. I'm not sure. Actually, I think you'll get one or the other, because it's not a specific one. You get the mag, and then you get one of these. Maybe you get another one, maybe you don't. I'm not really sure. Yeah, Yami, for sure. Like, but... The question, they're not even that, they're not even that powerful. Like, it's really hard to, like, um, like these are powerful, but it's really hard to make a case for them. So continuing from that point, so you need, you, you can break whatever ones you don't, you get that you don't need. You can break them down and they're going to give you extra schists or mikas or whatever they're using for their little drops at the time. So... Let's say you get your one that you're looking for and you have one ball and you need more balls. Well, your options are two things. One, you can play events, farm them and get some extra ones and build up a stock over 
months and months and months because every event usually has one of each little ball that you can trade for like 4,000 drops and you'll get one. And then like one of each, like the Kotonoa sisters had one of each. Uh, this event has one of each, one of the four and so on and so forth. So if you want to play for 10 months and you want to get one every month from the events, if the events even have them, then you'll stock up in some. Um, and then if you get ones you don't need on your path to getting it, you can break them down and get more balls. So basically, once you get your mag and then you get 10 balls of one and 10 balls of the other and you can't really choose when what you get when you roll, um, you can then make a mod. Um, so talking to Kagi again, let's have a look at these things. So the, the process to make them is very pay to win. It's... Um, Exactly, KMZ, yeah. Like, the, the big appeal to them is that they give you element and they give you a damage multiplier on every attack you do based on the element that they correspond to. So basically, if you had one of these mags on, they don't give you skill force, by the way, but nothing says you can't wear two Tempests and two mods. It's actually very powerful and it can be done, but it is expensive and costly and takes a lot of time. Um, like that's, a, that's a solid build. I think you can do that. Like 55, 55 is what? 110? Maybe not. You might not be able to do two mods. I don't know. 55 is 110 for two Tempests. And then the mags cost 35, I think. I mean, the, the, talking about two mods is something else for sure. Um, let's click on this one again. So the mod is 35 chakra before ornaments, by the way. And yeah. Prodigal, Frozen Hell, and two mods. It happens, William. It definitely does. But sometimes you just got to take a break, man. And you got to wait for the right event or you just got to do it. If anything, make sure you get your login every day. By all means. And watch your Royal Geary so you know what's coming. You know what's up. Um, but yeah, like there are some builds that work. Now, the build you're proposing is pure event like pay to win kind of scenario because th these are what we call pay to win mags because I don't even know if they make you win or not, but you have to pay for them. Otherwise you have to do point the room and stuff. And we're people are saying that in the point through room and I haven't mentioned it, but every month and monthly cooldown is a good way to say every month. If you farm enough to room of points, you can buy, um, the schists and Mika's and all that stuff from the point room. He is carrying one of each, every month what the frick was that they're all like lens flare effects i don't know if there's a point room i hear or not i'd be quite surprised if there was because it's not a main hub area but i will go to one in onigashima because there's a portal here yes but basically the point room if you want to farm a bunch of stuff um, you can buy more schists and mikas and stuff to make the mods, basically. And the mods are what you want. Like, the little mags, they're cute, they're 15 chakra, but they're not going to help you. All they do, the little ones, yes, they give you a little damage modifier, but all it's going to add on is, like, 150,000 max, I think. Like, that's as much as it can do. Whereas, like, a regular mod might be able to add on, like, 2 mil, which would be awesome. Like, they are powerful, don't get me wrong. I'm just not a fan of them. Like, I don't like, I, I don't like them. That's, that's my general opinion. If you want a spoiler, I don't like them. But I want to explain why I don't like them. I can't just come up here and say, yep, this bad, don't get, ignore, pliz, 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 thank, okay, thanks, bye. Can't do that. Um, oh boy. Overpowered weaponry everywhere. Holy God. Why isn't anyone using this? Why isn't anyone buying them? Anyway, so gift exchange. I believe they're at the bottom. Do -do 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 -do. No, they're not. Where are they? There they are. 
There's Golden Flore, Efflorescent Bud, Schist, Mika, Divine Thread, and Divine Crystal. Uh, they each cost 100,000 Jeruma points to obtain. Um, are they key items? That's what I thought. They each cost 100,000 points. So far, I have five, four Divine Crystals, two Fire Threads, one Mika, one Schist, two Buds, and a Flore. I've never specifically rolled for these things, but I have done events that gave me the pieces. And when I was rolling for a Vanguard, I might have gotten a mag at the same time. Yeah, we don't have whatever. Is there a Thunderstorm one? I don't know. We don't have that one yet. But I guess you can just quick look at them key items. Maybe. I don't know. It kind of reset my, my search here. There we go. What's that? Hair ponytail. What is that? Oh, I didn't know we had that. Huh. When did that get there? Was there always hairstyles in here? I guess there was and I just never knew. How come I can't buy this one? Oh, is it for the guy? Maybe. Anyway. Um, yeah, back to these flores. So they take about 100,000 to buy one every month. So if you bought this, it would be expired. It would be out of stock until next month. So that means you have to raise 100,000 points every month just for one or two. Um, I think the Daruma point limit is uh, 70, it's 75,000 right now because we have an event, but regularly it's 50,000 a week. Um, and we can save a further of this many. Wow. Okay. Um, what was I going with this? <laughs> Basically, on the average point during my time, when we don't have an event, the cap is 50,000. So that means, and that's 50,000 a week. It's 100K, wow. So, um, so 50K a week. So if you wanted to, you know, farm 150 or 50,000 points a week, every single week, by all means, go for it. Like if that's what you want to do, the best way to farm Daruma points, like I've said, is... Um, uh, Inaki Woods in the Nether, make and break Mongoku mags, trade in your leftover stones. That's the best way to make Druma points in the game. Now, oh, there are other ways to do it. If you've already beaten an event and you have leftover event drops, event drops set, tend to exchange for more points than other items if you no longer need them. So, for example, with our current Halloween Lancelot event, I'm not sure how much those drops trade in for, but if you've already completed everything, you've already done your whole exchange shop, and you're still running the dungeons um maybe you can trade in those and they're worth um more points than the average object that is another good way also excess friendship items are always nice point metal i should actually trade in my point metals there's no reason for me to hold on to these i can't convert that was a hundred thousand points guys we did it yeah <laughs> wow okay And always trade in your points. If you're going to use metals and stuff and not actively do it, always trade in points before Sunday. So, like, on Saturday, like today. Or before Monday, I think. I'm not sure. Before Saturday is a safe bet. So, oh my god. Is it really just all the gold? Wow. Oh, oh, oh it's 86,000. It's right there. Right there. Okay. So that's a good use of it there. It's a good way to get points. Um, so you can see here that like the soft tail from the last event, the glistening eggshell from the last event, juicy banana, like all this stuff that I have 3,000 of, I could trade them all in for two points and that would be a hefty amount of points because I'm not going to use them again because the event is over. You could save them if you want in case the event ever came back. But um, apparently the current ones, the Monster Enticement Candy, Bambrack, and Pumpkin Pie all trade in for one. So they're honestly not worth doing. Don't trade metals. I mean, you could. 
<laughs> That's not bad. Third class medals, 40 points each. If you run a lot of Oni mode and you don't really need anything with your Oni medals, it's a good method too. Not bad either. Resby flowers are actually really good because they're three points each, by all means. Um, there's always good for points. Farming for like um, stuff to make Tempest and all that, whatever. Um, so yeah, that, that aside, let's go back to this whole debate about these schists and stuff. So basically 100,000 100, points to get one. If you bought one, it would only restock next like month. So that means regularly you can only get enough points to buy two of these items a month. You can't get all four or six or seven or whatever is here. You can only get two a month with the room of points. So efflorescent blood. I don't know what kind of mag I have, but I would need 10 of one and 10 of the other. It is something you could work for and do it over time if you manage to get one. But I don't think it's advisable like just to go for it. Like I wouldn't aim for it. Like if it happens to fall into your lap and you get one of these mags while you're rolling for something else, by all means pursue it if that's what you're interested in. But as a player, I don't see the appeal of rolling for a Magatama that I, I just don't like the idea of it. Do I have any? I have I have one, okay? I have one mag that I really enjoy. I don't use it, but I really enjoy it. That's a good question. Do I have any? I have a Windstaff Heaven with Unblinking Eye on it, and that's it. Because these used to give us extra drops in the Yog event. That was the only reason you'd want one. This mag I plan on using someday. This is a Senryu. Senryus are pretty good. I won't lie about Senryus and Prodigals. Those ones are good. Um, so to me, Senryus and Prodigals are good if you want to go for them. Yes, I think they're worth to go after if that's what you want. Personally, I don't care. Um, generally, I'd sooner use Three Tempest. Um, but... I don't really see a... To me, I don't have that big, big enough appeal. I'm sorry if this video is not as straightforward as I thought because I really just want to explore everything, look at every mag, and just make a conclusion at the end. Like, I have my presupposition that I don't like these mags. Um, I don't like them on principle that you have to roll for them. I don't like the idea of that because if more people because there's an economics value to it as well like if they notice that players are rolling for these mags they're buying what cybercept's selling people are rolling specifically for these not for vanguards like they look at the data it's hard to really tell what people are rolling for but if these units make a lot of money well and if people just keep buying up these mags and they don't get free to play alternatives and they don't do this and that the next thing is going to be weapons Prodigals are basically raw skill force. They don't have negatives. Okay. Um, that makes sense. But the next thing that's going to happen, like we already have pay to win accessories. And I've already kind of said, well, they've always been there. You kind of need those. They occupy a slot that arguably cannot be filled in a free to play manner. Um, sublimes are optional but they're so awesome so devastating so powerful if you manage to get them they're awesome but you don't need them to beat the game same thing with these mags accessories are like the only one in that category that you don't need them but you need them like it's possible to do beat the game and excel without them but it just really really helps if you have them like me having toshis is worlds above stronger than me if i didn't have toshis or anything at all like i'd, I'd be so weak like i'd be so much weaker than i am now um and accessories can make a build definitely um but when it comes to the senryu and the prodigal those mags are actually kind of worth getting yeah the six and 99 accessories those are a bit of attack yep they are you're right about that 
they they do give those but getting attack accessory like attack affinity all that stuff accessories give is super awesome but yes there is a free to play alternative now three years later to get those accessories you can do that get the six and nine accessories and do okay you'll get more attack it won't be as op as possible but they do exist now there is a free to play alternative now but when they first came out there wasn't so it's kind of been you know it's not part of the norm it was part of the norm to get vanguard accessories but now that there's an alternative it might not so be the case so like let's say at the beginning of the game if, if, if at the beginning of the game the only magatamas were from the, the neon coro pond the game wouldn't work no one would play it and that'd be the end of it because no one's gonna roll to be able to get an item that they need to play like like go away i'll go to a casino i'll go spend my money somewhere elsewhere it wouldn't work but introducing them later and they're honestly not that op they're not and let's let's look at them okay like objectively like let's just skip all the song and dance we'll go back to kage and we're gonna look at all them and you know just go from there hopefully i don't crash walking through this land of lag and decay okay so magazine crafting um they're in this section here and we'll look for them we're only going to look at the mods and the prodigals now mostly right now the mods are the ones i don't really care about what's a monsoon what does that take thunderstorm yeah these ones they're in the list but we can't make them yet we don't have access to them they are rain the rain mags Ooh. rain mags and thunder mags okay so thunder magatama mod that's the rainstorm storm one Okay, so are there any more in here? Where's the prodigals? I can't find them. Maybe I skipped them. I don't know. What's this monsoon? Why is it down there? Like, everything's not in order. Oh, there's the prodigals. Okay. I was looking for, like, prodigal mod. So a prodigal mod... Wait, what? Oh, prodigals aren't split. This is why I hate them. <laughs> so prodigals are not prodigal sword odachi. They're not prodigal spear axe. So this is a disconnect from me. I thought they were all like, I thought they were all like the new ones where they're split. Because, okay, so just a reset here. When these mags first came out, prodigals or prodigals send reuse and prodigals are only for one specific thing so there's eight different send reuse which means there's eight different prodigals i hated them then because then it's you have a one out of eight chance of rolling a gold and getting the one that's actually for you if you manage to get one for you either you heavily rolled for it or it came by luck and that's it and to me the prospect of there being a 12.5 percent chance in a specific neon coral pond in a specific unit that doesn't actually have a vanguard that i want in it seemed very very out of my way and a waste of money when there were other alternatives that can do the job if not better than eight little magatama boys that give you skill force okay so i don't like that concept now, in recent months, all of the new ones, in recent months, all of the new ones are split. They are Axe, Spear, Sword, Odachi, Twin, Bow, Wand, Staff. So they apply to two different things at the same time, which makes them twice as more possible, like twice as more likely to obtain the one you want because there's only four instead of eight however they put the wind one and the water like let's just say the wind one and the mountain one in the same lineup so it's the illusion of hey i only have a 25 percent chance to get the one i want but in that gold lineup it's still in 12.5 percent chance to get the one the specific weapon type and the specific element that you want for your character else you get all this other stuff and if you can't get your own all this other stuff is trash even if you break it down and get shisks and mikas and all the other things you can't actually make a senryu now if they made it now i might be talking out my ass here actually 
I might I I forgot about one thing. Mountain and wind mags. I think I'm wrong, but in Nairi, yeah, I think you can make them. I'm not sure. I thought he could. Couldn't he make Senryu's? Or am I am I wrong? I thought he could do that. Or was it just emanation? I don't know. I could have swore he could make... Someone could get them to you. Maybe I'm wrong. Isn't that a thing on PC that you can use a Zenith medals to get them? He used to exchange them! That's what I friggin' thought. That's what I friggin' thought. Because I was just saying, well, if there was something that I could do... To, I was like, if there was something that I could do to make the base form and not go through all this RNG pay-to-win bullshit and just trade in stuff, I would have a different opinion on them. But they took that away because that defeats the whole purpose because if there's a free-to-play alternative, people are going to do it. Whether it was limited time or not, that's some straight-up bullshit. Because he... Because I, I, I was like, he, he was supposed to make them. He can't. So, screw that. Because I remember that. he It was some outlandish price. You could get like one Senryu for like some, um, like 9,000 medals. Wasn't that right? It was twice the price of a Tempest? 9,000 medals to get one Senryu. It was 9,000. Now, mind you, that's a lot of medals, but I've had 9,000 medals. Don't worry about that. You get medals by the buttload in events. I'll get 50 right now. Like, it's not that bad. But they took that away. So that's further a negative. Oh, gross. Disgusting. Now we get to go back to this menu. And look at this stuff again. All right. So what do these actually do? Okay. Level 35, Prodigal Magatama. So, how do we make it? Can I click on it? Thank you. You need 10 Florets, 10 Buds, and you need the Spear Mag. Okay. So, you get, all right off the bat, 80% Spear Skill Force. Woo! Or your weapon Skill Force. If you're 110 or more, you get 20 more. So, 100 Skill Force at 110. And then at level 120, you get another 20 Skill Force. So then you're at 120 skill force at 120? Is that right? Yes. Okay. Great. At 125, you get another 20 skill force. So that's... PC never even got them. God damn. So at 125, you're at 140 skill force. And then at 130 plus, you're at... Is it 170 skill force? Let me read that again. 80, 20 is 100. 120 at 120. 140 at 125. And then 170 skill force. 170 skill force at level 130 plus. Okay. And then it gives you SP reduction. So that's actually really good. SP reduction is awesome. It makes your skills cost less to use. Really, really awesome. Unless someone were to, I don't know, meditate and then negate that altogether. Uh, uh, then they give you 10 cooldown, 15 crit force, increased durability reduction. That's actually the good one. They make your skills take, this mag makes your skills take less skill f or le take less durability and less SP by five and 10% durability. Then they come with, the spear one comes with 30 pierce element, 15 slice element, and negative, fifth, negative 20 impact. So that's its little dynamic. So 30 pierce, 15 slice, and negative impact. So that's pretty good. Um, there's no actual element on it though. It, there's no element. So basically, this mag is a very low chakra mag, by all means, 35 chakra, very low chakra mag for 35 chakra, 3000 defense at grade zero. So it, if it was at grade 100, it would probably be much, much more, 
probably in the six thousands. Um, well, if if at zero it has three thousand and it's not a static number, if at zero it has three thousand, then at fifty, it'll have um, around forty six, and then at uh, grade 100, it would have um, close to 5,000 defense. So, yeah, that's true too. If you wanted just a pure skill force mag, are you sure? Oh, last hand three, you're right. There, there's definitely a lot of things. I didn't know a lot about things getting removed, but I know about things not getting added in the first place. We're learning a lot here. But yeah, if you if you did the last stand, that, that's a lot of skill force, 245. If you had two of those mags at 59 chakra, your skill force is maxed, but you, then you don't have element. That's the only thing, is you don't have element. This is just one as aspect of it, the prodigal. Um, but the prodigal is a lot of skill force. It absolutely is. I think the Senryu is worth it. Yeah, they took away some, some stuff there. I know that. Um, I think the regular Senryu is really good. Like, I ornamented one, and it's going to have a lot of skill force on it. I enjoy it. The regular Senryu is awesome. The Prodigal, probably awesome too. But it doesn't have the element. So unless you have all your element coming from another source... Um, this mag is just raw skill force. And raw skill force, as good as it is, just to have more skill force, it's not as good as having the like um, an average skill force and the right element. Um, and these days, I know a lot of players will just, like, they can go make a fuse or something if they want to. Uh, this one has a bit of slice on it. It depends on the mag. Like, Spear will have Slice, Sword will have Slice, but it's bigger and smaller in different proportions. And yes, your your weapons do have elements. So let's say you have a Prodigal and you have a weapon that gives you 60 element. You now have 60 element. Um, you know, it's really hard to say. But they're not universal skill force. Basically, a prodigal is about as good as a knowledge mag, but it's a knowledge that's specific and doesn't have any element on it. So it's like a non-universal, non-elemental knowledge mag. Um, the crit force is okay. The crit force is uh, 15, but I think the crit force on a tempest is 30, isn't it? Like, it's 10 crit force on a 105, 20 on a fuse, and 30 on a tempest? I think that's what it is. Or maybe I'm wrong, I'm not sure. Um, I can check real quick. It's 25? 25 sounds about right. You're right. No, it's 30 crit force. 30 crit force per tempest. And a fused is 20. So it's not 25. So it's less crit force than a fused and less crit force than um, a Tempest. That's all right. It's five. It's whatever. So comparing them to your fuse and your Tempest, um, I don't think a Prodigal is as good as a Tempest. I don't. Because you're missing out on that attack. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, do I think they're good to have? Yes. If, if you manage to get a Senryu and you improve it to a prodigal and you ornament it correctly, because nowadays we have countermeasures to bad ornaments before the prospect of a Magatama that you can only get once or pay a buttload of money that you could possibly mess up an ornamentation on was so many red flags that to me, it's just not a sound investment. Now it's... I'm leaning a bit more to if you can get your hands on it, go for it, but don't go out of your way for it. Like, because now with Magatama removal options, like, things aren't permanent anymore. 
that's a super long-term investment because those take floor raise and stuff as well. You would have to dump a thousand dollars onto that unit just to get all that stuff. Like just to get all the, the orbs and the schists and all that stuff. It would, oh my God, it would just suck. Like to get those kind of ornaments because there are ornaments that you can only put on these mags and it just puts you into this separate society where there are things you put on them, things you don't, and you, things you can only do there, and so much love went into these mags, but there, you can't obtain them without paying money. And if you want to ornament them with these special things, you gotta pay more money, or farm. Like, I mean, God forbid we farm, but farming Daruma points to only get two a month, if that, every month. Like, it's a long-term commitment, not just a long-term investment. Yeah, you only get two mats a month. Maybe three plus an event, if that were to come. And hello, hello. I don't know if I said that or not, but hello, hello. So, Prodigal, like, if you can get your hands on everything, and everything just falls on your lap, and you're getting a Vanguard along the way, make one. Like, if life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But if life doesn't give you lemons, and lemons are expensive as fuck, don't like don't go out of your way so lom here prime example he says he has one prodigal and it sucks <laughs> it took one year to craft from points from points alone one year that makes sense that's 10 months that's a 10 month commitment that is a year commitment absolutely so that's and that's farming points every single day you're not exactly having fun you're you're farming points you're working you know just to get that mag. Now it is a low chalker mag. It can make some interesting builds. Like mentioned earlier, you could get a prodigal mag. You could get a frozen hell mag. Whenever we get that PC's had it for a year, we don't have it yet. So it's hard to talk about. Uh, so let's say knowledges. Um, but at that point, you're just better off stacking more knowledges because you're already negative holy anyway. So fuck it. Um, you know, like these mags are good for when the enemy that you're trying to fight has your negative element and it's really destroying you like yeah like pros and cons it's low chakra cost and it's high skill force is a pro so let's say you wanted to go in with chiami an element mag and then a tempest and a prodigal you could probably fit that together a lot more than two tempests i mean you could fuck that you can wear two tempests a chiami and a sparrow who cares <laughs> like because that's just my answer that's what I'm going to go down to yeah like that's going to fit what I was describing there like that's something you can do it'll fit it'll work but the mag itself doesn't have element so that means your element's going to have to suffer a blow or come from your other mags and then come from your um come from your your accessory your magatom is your other mags and your weapons that's where your elements going to come from cuz generally the consensus is it's better to have magatama that have like basically 105s and event mags mags that have element and skill force but as a fourth mag you want a mag that has element not skill force or crit force not skill force because generally you can hit the skill force ceiling with your weapon and two tempests under half you're good to go if you want to worry about that three tempests if you don't want to worry about health at all like me i don't care about health thresholds it just is what it is um when long-term boss with high hp i can wear chiami and tempest with dura boost when you long-term boss with high hp you can wear chiami and Tempest with durability boost. Yep. That's the thing. Like, Prodigals do make it so you take less durability. But the same argument is made for mags that make you take more durability. Is that 90% of the time you're going to go into Vanguard anyway. And they don't take durability. They don't care if your durability is going up or down or reduced or extended. As long as you can get in that vanguard and beat him up and, you know, do whatever you got to do, 
no one cares. You know? Yeah, it's nice to your moves to take a little bit less durability, but if you're blowing 7,000 durability a weapon every battle, you're doing something wrong. You know, like, if you're running through that much... Unless you're fighting a gold skeleton, like, that's it. Really, that's, that's pretty much it. You're fighting the gold skeleton. Like, or something of that nature. Something of that health, and you're running out of that much durability, then, then your build's not adequate. If, if durability is really that much of a question, like this is a this is a bonus ability, not a main point to focus on. But or oh, what if we wore three mods and then it's fifteen percent less? Well, you're still gonna get in the vanguard. And what if you wore four mods? Because can we even do that? 70, 70, 140? No ornamented mods. You can wear four mods. Have more skill force than the gods themselves. <laughs> Then it's like, I'm saving 20% durability to have no element. Go for it, dude. But uh, I'm not trying to make fun of anyone. It's just that's how it sounds to me. Um, Coats of Noah mags have 140 skill force, 45, 40 ice, wind, no negativity. No negativity. Nice. They're positive. With 7k defense at grade 50, new mats. That's another point too. Thank you, Yami. That's another point. So I, I mentioned knowledges and stuff. But that's true. So we, let's take the example of Elohim. Elohim has one. It works when you need to do a specific build where the chakra fits. They have their place for that. Maybe you want to eliminate your negative element. Maybe you just get, I don't know. But the main point here is, well, what if you drop like X amount of money, you get your mod either you farm all your points you play all your events or you're just dropping money to get those mags because if you can't get the base mag from the maga the neon coral pond you can't make the mag at all because they remove the ability to make it with metals so you have to get it from the neon coral pond if you can't get it from the neon, neon coral pond there's no other way to get it so if you're in that position where you have the mag and you manage to get all your balls from events farming rolling whatever it happens and let's say that costs you x amount of money you finally do it you equip it and then after so many months went by of you farming of a year went by well guess what you just got this mag and a new element a new mag like the coat Noah comes out it has skill force it has element it has defense it has these slots and it comes out in an event it's pretty much free and it just power creeps your thing you spent so much money on and time and effort and that's it the thing about accessories is, yes, accessories can be power crept, but ultimately, ultimately, accessories are good. There's just better ones, and it's usually not that much better. Like, for Spear, we had, like, Yoshitsune, and we jumped to Toshi, and that's, like, heaven and earth. Like, you know, but, like, I like to compare them to accessories. I do. Accessories can get power crept, but it's never usually that much except for spear going from nothing to Toshi was huge But like Miyamoto accessories are still good today Like whether like a Kenshin accessory comes out and it's better. Maybe it's a different element, but you, it's not like you need to have it like Accessories can get power crept, but these mags these prodigals these mods these monsoons these whatever They can get power crept really quick like they can throw it an event. They want people to play Kotonoa mags, knowledge mags, rain mags, lightning mags, wind mags, dark mags, they're all gonna come. Like that's the reason I won't make an emanation. It's the same thing. Emanation, it is farmable, it is something, but it's off the beaten path. I don't really care for it. I don't need the fire for anything. And by the time I make it, there'll be a fire knowledge. Basically, this Kotonoa mag that's coming out that has 40 fire on it and 140 skill force, that is gonna make emanation seem like poop because you can just get them from the event and that's it. That's it. It's all efforts wasted. Your drop percent. You got this mag. You found the metals. Whatever it was. It's all power creep. Power creep exists for everything. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do anything ever. But when it comes to something that you can either farm a free-to-play alternative for. Or just pay for something. And not get it. And gamble. I don't like that prospect. And I'm sorry if I'm getting long-winded and rowdy. But that's kind of how I feel about it. And everything's kind of falling into place this late in the video. I apologize. But you know more and more evidence comes forth and i really appreciate you guys being in the chat 
and giving your opinions. So that's just the prodigal. <laughs> we got to talk about Jade Crest and Aqua Wind and Batman. I don't know what they're called. Purgatory. We got to talk about these. Okay. So Jade Crest mod. So the mod mags. This is the ones that we have in the Young Coropon right now. This is their final form. So they have the same defenses, same chakra, same purity as the prodigal. They all follow suit. And this is what it does. To get one of these, you need... 10 Shis, 10 Mika, and a thingy. The Kotanoa Mag needs two fused? That's fine. That's whatever. That's medals. <laughs> That's medals! <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> they give us medals of the yin yang. Whatever. Go for it. Get a 105 and some medals. Go for it. Fused? Ideal in fused. Fused is like medals, baby. Medals, medals, medals. Anyway, so this thing, what it does, you need to have 180 element in order for this to work to get your bonus of one damage dealt depending on the value of mountain element during a critical hit at a rate of 10%. <laughs> oh, you have that many metals? Yeah, exactly. So if you don't have a total of 180 element, the bonus damage of this mag, the great appeal for it is null and void. These mags have no skill force. <laughs> Great. So all our skill force has to come from the prodigal. <laughs> Fuck. It's just an endless cycle. Um, so basically you need to have 180 elements. So what does that mean? How are you going to achieve 180 elements? Well, you're in luck. If you're level 135, this Magatama... Or if you're level 130... <laughs> 135, fuck. If you're 130... Um, all the little bonuses from this mag is going to give you a total of 100 element towards what it's talking about. So mountain, if you're 130 plus, you get 100 mountain. If it's wind, it's 100 wind. So you're going to have 100, your weapon's going to give you 60, and then the rest is going to come from another mag, or it's going to come from your accessories. So let's say, um, let's go look at the wind one, just really quick. Um, heaven, purgatory, aqua wind. I must be aqua wind, because water wind it makes so much sense okay aqua breeze it's not even called aqua wind it's aqua breeze what the flip anyway <laughs> aqua breeze magatama axe spear what is this what what is that how come it doesn't have the jade crest effect what is this what, is this is level 20 what the fuck what what is this Aqua Wind. What was I looking? Oh, I was looking at the base mag. I was freaking like, what? We can make these? This is expensive. Okay. Sorry. So, the wind version, you need 180 wind. And then if you're level 130 plus, it gives you 100 wind in total. And then you're going to need 80 wind from somewhere else. It's also going to give you, get this, 20 affinity. Woohoo. Oh, yeah. 20 affinity, boys. Yeah. I'm being very, very freaking sarcastic. You get 20 Axe Affinity and 20 Spear Affinity because that makes a fucking difference. And you get 15% um, SP, 10 Attack Speed, 5 Critical, and it reduces your durability. Okay. So, if you equip this mag and your level's right, you get 100 Element for 35 Chakra. That's really good. You can't complete with that. That's really good. But, how much wind do I have? If I have three Tempests, but then I lose a lot of skill force. So if I have two Tempests, I have like 45 wind. And then my fourth mag could have 45 wind on it too, or 48 wind. Or if it's a Lion Dog, which I do have a Lion Dog, it could be like 60 wind. So then I'm at 120 wind already. Great. Fantastic. Um... Anyway, um, so let's see here. So it gives you 100 element, and then if you have 180 more, you get this bonus factor. So you have to have 100 element from this. Your weapon gives you 60 element, because that's usually what they give you. And then you need another mag with wind. So if I had this and I had a Tempest, I would have, 100 and, I would have over 180 wind, and I'd be able to use its effects. So you could wear a two Tempest this mag and then a fourth mag and you would have some very very devastating wind it would actually be pretty strong um 
because your skill force would be pretty good, but you have to be under X amount of skill force. Um, or X amount of HP. It's strong. In that regard, it is strong, but the path to getting it, like I said for an hour, and I probably haven't shut up about it, is very, very, very long. And you get the bonus value of one damage at 10%. Which an Elios weapon has. Now, if you had an Elios weapon and this, you would have two chances to do that, and it would be very, very devastating on a wind thrust thing. It is a strong mag. I can't deny that. With the proper build, these mags are strong. They're not garbage. I'm not trying to say, oh, they're bad because they only give this much um, affinity or whatever. Like it is attack, straight up. Um, these mags are strong. I can't I can't deny that. But I don't like going for them because of what I said earlier. Just going for them with the only means to get them being in the Nyan Coral Pond. And that's just the first step. The first step is getting it in the Nyan Coral Pond. Let's say you sent 200 bucks, you finally got your own. Or you sent, spent 16 bucks and you got it right away. Whatever that threshold is, you finally got your mag. So you spent money, you got the thing, then you got to get the balls. Let's say you didn't get any other balls. Let's say you got all of one. You need to farm that. So let's say you don't have enough balls from what you've gotten and what you've rolled. So then you got to play event one and then get 100,000 points each month. So you get all your points in the month and then you play your event. So you've got three, another month, another month, another month. So you finally got this thing, but you can only really use it six months later, let's say. And then you finally get to use your mag. And then within six months, you got to hope and pray that no power creep has come out to not make this mag worth it or that you finally have it and you have to hope that there's something you're going to use it on because in a six month period, maybe the thing that you need to win for you know, it doesn't, isn't around anymore or maybe it is. I don't know. So then you got to get it. Then you got to ornament it. And if it doesn't ornament right, then you got to use your Magatama items, which come from events. And I mean, that's normal. But it's such a process. Like... Yeah. What's the other one? Purgatory mod? Purgatory, what's that? Fire element. If fire element 180 or more, so it does all that. 100 fire, it gives you spear affinity, it gives you axe affinity, critical, 5 critical, who cares? 3 ornamentation slots. So what ornaments would you put on it? It's colorless, so you can't put faded... What can you put on these? If it's colorless, what do you put on it? Like it's a, a gear mag, it's a other, it's a untyped. What ornaments go on untyped things? Just trying to think if we had one, what would you put on it? Sapphire purity eight, I guess I'll look at this sapphire. That's a good example. Okay, you can do crosswise with Jabberwock, and that's five chakra. That's fine. Go for it. I mean, how would that work? So it's thirty-five chakras. So you could do one of these, and it's forty-five chakra. You do two of these. It's or no, it's forty chakra. Two of them is forty-five. Three of them is fifty chakra. Then you're at, like, all the element in the world. So let's say you got one of these for wind, and you did, like, um, Jabberwock, and you got three rolls, and you got, like, 35 wind. Let's say you got 30 wind each roll. Like, let's be happy-go-lucky about this. 25. 25 wind each roll, let's say. So then 25 times 3 is 75. So you have 175 element on one mag alone. Plus your weapon. Let's say it gives you 60. So 175 element. And that's like a min-max number anyway. 175. It's not even min-max. It's like in the middle average. Uh, 175 plus 60. So you add the 30. So you're at 205. You're at 135 element. That'd be good. That's a hell of an investment, but it'd be good. If you could get a mod and do three Jabba walks on it or whatever, 
three of these ornaments. Because you only need six purity, it's fine. So then you'd have, basically, if you had one of these mags, and you use your Magatama items that didn't exist when they first came out to reset their rolls and do it perfectly, and everything turned out perfectly, and you had Transcendence and all that stuff to do it, then you'd have one mag that generally would cap your element, and then at 50 chakra. So let's say you have one mag at 50 chakra, capping your element to whatever it is, and it gives you a modifier. Then you would have your two Tempests at 55 chakra each, giving you skill force. And then you'd have a fourth slot for something else, and you'd have seven chakra at 130 and nine chakra at 134 to work with. But then you wouldn't have a, a you would not have a, an element mag at that point. You would have a crit mag. You would have a fourth crit mag, and you would do something like that. Now that would work. That's that's literally my strategy with uh, two Tempest and a Cielo. The thing is, a Cielo gives me skill force too. This doesn't give you skill force; it gives you extra modifier. So it could work. It would max out your element. It would be definitely really cool. That'd be the best way I could see about going about using them. Yeah, maybe. It's a lot of investment, that's for damn sure. Holy boys. And then if you wanted to, you know, sink like 10 more floor raisin, you can gain like a thousand attack, or you can like not do that. Because that's so many floorees. Hmm. So I think I think we're ready for it. <coughs> oh, 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 oh. My throat is choking on air. So let's say at the end of this, I think we're ready for a conclusion. I've talked about pretty much every aspect of this enough. Um So with these mags, yes, they are powerful. Are they OP? Maybe. They're not game-defining. If you get one and you put all this work into it, like Elohim said, it's not going to guarantee that you're OP. It can work for some builds, and you can make it work, but at the end, it's not... It's not going to... It's not pay-to-win. These aren't pay-to-win mags. They're... Like, you're... Like, get rid of the whole win part. Like, you pay for them. They can work, and they're very powerful. If you use them right but it takes a lot of investment like these are a long-term investment mag like a year's worth of investment if you're gonna go the point room away if you're gonna go the rolling way then it's money and you have to get at least one so like i said earlier you got to get at least one mag then you got to break down your other ones to see if you get shists and mikas little balls then you do your point rumas you do your events you stock them up like pretty good um the Prodigal, though, is nice, but if you have Tempest, the Prodigal is useless. In my op opinion, a Prodigal is way worse than a Tempest, because a Tempest is going to give you Skill Force anyway, it's going to give you more Crit Force, going to give you more cooldown, and it's going to give you actual elements to work with. The Prodigal gives you some physical elements. Now, Prodigal does excel if you're Bow and you want to use Rapid Shot. That's really, really good. However, the rain mags came out after Prodigal came out. The rain mags give us, give bow and spear like 40 or 35 pierce a mag. So if you had three of them, it's like 90 pierce. And bow's rapid shot's just going to get so much bonus from that. And bow could just use aqua needle and rapid shot from those mags that are going to be from an event that you don't have to pay for. You just have to compete in. So Prodigal's at power cup. Prodigals were really good for physical element. That's what they were good for. But those mags are going to have the physical elements that are best attuned to their weapon. So Prodigals power crept by these mags that give you water and are negative uh, lightning, I believe. I think. I think that's what they are. No, they're water negative fire. The weapon's negative lightning. So then... 
in every situation, unless you're fighting something that's using fire but weak to an element um, that you're trying to use, um, Prodigal loses out all the way compared to that mag in the future. So Prodigal is power crap swept away by these new mags coming. Um, the Crest mags, the Mod mags, the Purgatory, the Heaven, basically the Holy One, the Fire One, the Wind One, and the Mountain One, then eventually there's a Thunder One and a Rain One, which is the Monsoon. So there's six of them. Six elements are covered. The only ones that aren't covered are Knowledge and Ice. Those don't exist yet. However, we have, like I said, Knowledge. It's Dark. Dark. Dark and Ice aren't covered. However, um, Oguchi is going to have an event with the best Ice Mag in the game. And we've already had Knowledges that are Darkness that are Dark. So if they made a Dark one, yeah, it'd be cool to have a Dark Multiplier. But like Dark is already targeted. Like, you know, it only adds so much. Um, and so on and so forth. Uh, ultimately, I'd prefer to have a Senryu over a Prodigal at this point. Because a Senryu can fit into more build, like if like I have a Senryu ornamented with like last stand three ornaments of it, the thing gives me like extra attack and it gives me like I don't know how much skill force I have one like I, I want to level up to put it on like I think that's actually good, I think Senryus are good, I think Senryus are good and I think the elemental mods are good, but I don't think they're worth going out of your way for unless you're ready for like the hell of a grind that may or may not get power crept or be really good now that's a good point yami jade crest is good unless you're making a fujin mag because a fujin mag is literally wind and mountain and it's wind and mountain element and it's skill force and it does all that the only thing these mod mags do is that if you already have if you want to go with like a two tempest build and then you want to put one on to get the extra element and the extra multiplier, that's really good. Or you could just make Fujin mags for wind and mountain or like Fujin mags for thunder and ice. Because I made ice mags like that. I did with the um, Fujin mags or the Rajin mags or whatever it was. Um, you know, um, where's my Senryu mag? My Senryu mag here. Like, I looked at this and I said, you know, I got some potential on this. I never ornamented it. I never did anything with it. 21 chakra, three inevitable last stand ones. It basically, it makes it so that... What is this thing? It's like, I like this way more than the prodigal. Like, a Senryu is 15 chakra. And if you're level 125, it gives you 60 skill force, plus another 10, 70 skill force, plus another 20, 90 skill force for 15 chakra. Really good. Now that's a good build, yeah. A lot of Dura for sure. Um, but I think Prodigal isn't as good as the others anymore. Prodigal is probably like, it's gonna get power crap swept away. Um, Senryu is good though, because it's a fourth mag. Like you can go at 134, I can wear two Tempests, like a Chiami and a Senryu with this ornamentation. And that would be godly. Be max skill force. Just extra attack. All that stuff. Yeah, I, I was actually just talking about I think you're away, Stan. But I was talking about that. The, that the prodigal for bow is good. But the bamboos are better. Yep. Yeah, I, I think the bamboos are better. Because you're already getting the rain. And you're getting more element from the bamboos. Yeah, I think the bamboos are better. Yeah, the, the bamboos and the silhouettes, when they come and they have the element, uh, the water element and the physical element, they're better. Bows are going to use that over that every day. Every day. And you don't have to drop a cent for them. You just got to play the game. Do the event. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing. Like, if I would have, like, made this video, like, years ago, I wouldn't have known about those. I would have been, holy fuck, these are good for bow. Holy fuck, these are good for lunch stuff. And etc. 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 But like those things can be achieved with ornaments, no problem. Um, I think the center is way better than the prodigal. Yeah, yeah, I did a video on that earlier, Yami. It's really, really cool. 
Um, like I think I think Senryu is good. Um, talk to Kagi again for the fifth time. <laughs> okay. Well, you can give her swords. Yeah. Okay, and then these Aqua Breeze and stuff. So you need to hit that 180 element, which is doable. And if, honestly, with the Chakra and that, like I said, these mags are good. They are, if you do the proper steps. So, like, in the perfect world, like, what you would need to make these mags good is you would need, like... Now, here's the thing. I, I keep saying, oh, yeah, use them with two Tempests. Okay, but only Spear, te like, Spear and Odachi Tempest are the only wind ones. Nothing else is wind. Okay, so you have to have the right Tempest with the right mod. So if you have, so if you have, like, Axe, then you want the Mountain mod, right? But I can't use the Mountain mod with these mags. I'd have to make... The mountain mod, and then I'd have to make two uh, Raijin mags or Fujin mags, and then <laughs> or have a fourth mag with element on it in order to get the bonus. So it's already limiting your build in that capacity. I didn't actually factor in that. What if your Tempest or doesn't have the element you want? Now the other argument is well, if you have Fusion Bear or Fused Bear, that's going to give you wind and water. That's great, but that's also from another L another event. That was very RNG. Exactly. That That's from another element. That's another event. That's like building off of one event to another event. Assuming that you have this event. Like, holy boys. Yeah. Like, it's going to give you 100 element. Your weapon's going to give you 60. And then maybe your accessories are going to give you something. Or your fourth mag is going to give you something. Like, if it's giving you 100 and then your weapon's doing that, but that's the thing, you have to be using that specific weapon. You can't change weapon and expect it to run. It's not an everywhere build, it's a sometimes build. It's a build for a certain thing. Tempest, three Tempest, you can wear that pretty much everywhere. You're going to be fine unless you have to use your negative. That's like the only time, you know? It's a, it's a sometimes build. Like, I can't be walking around with two Tempests in a mod and go fight... Or a wind mod and go fight Infernal. It's not gonna happen. I mean, maybe, but it's not gonna happen. You know, you have to have the element coming from some other source. So after that, then you need all the stuff to do, like, really good ornamentations. Um, either, um, what, we, what are those called? Like, Jabberwock and stuff? Or Heaven... I don't I think Heavenly Shield. And then... You have to have the materials to do that. You have to have the ornamentation items, the band-aids, the buttons, the transcendence. You need all that stuff to make sure everything goes well, like I did my Celio with Avenger on Monsters. You get all that stuff to come through. You you get the ornamentations. You get it to work. Bam, bam, boom. You've got an awesome. You've got like 200 element on one mag. If you can do that, then you don't. It doesn't matter what your other mags are. You can do whatever the hell they want. As long as they give you skill force, that means. I, I mean, you know, you need element and skill force. So you do all that. Like, in this perfect world, you have your, your transcendence. You have your Magatama removal things. You have the ornamentation stuff to do that. You get the mag. You have band-aids so that it doesn't break. Etc, etc, etc. You go through this RNG of making sure it's perfect. You get that to work. You go through all those hoops. You get all your shisks and your mikas over the course of 10 months. You hope it doesn't get power crept. You get your thing. You get your element. You put it on. You make your build. And it works. And if it works and it does good, that's great. But if it's not super duper good and better than what else someone else is doing. Like if it's making it so that you can have all this wind. You get Elio Spear. You get Fusion uh, Whirlwind Thrust Sublime. If it's not doing like 11 million a tick, <laughs> we have a problem. And not only that, maybe you have Kiritan from another event that's specific and you have her as an assist partner and she's buffing your wind so that you can use more wind and boost your attack and do all this damage. And wait, what if Satan just boosted my attack and my attack just did insane damage anyway because damage cap's a problem? Like, there's so many contingencies, so many buts and ifs and 
Someone's gonna listen to this and they're gonna be like, Oro's crazy. Just tell me to get the mag or not, goddammit. But <laughs> the end of the day, if you want to get this mag and it doesn't just happen to fall in your hands from rolling for something else, you're gonna be in for a hell of a struggle. Either rolling for more mags, farming Druma points endlessly every month like a goddamn chore, as if, and not to mention all the events that are going to come that you're going to have to do to get your balls and all that stuff and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or maybe there's no events to help accelerate it or whatever. You still got to farm your points. You still got to do all this stuff. Hopefully you don't have a job. Hopefully you don't have a social life, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe you'll get it done in a year. It took Elohim a year and he's a pretty hardcore guy. So then you do all that stuff. You're prepared to do all that stuff. Great, you've invested like 200 bucks trying to get your mag, you get your balls and your shisks. Great, $200 in down investment, down payment. Then you gotta farm, get all your balls, do all that stuff. A year later, you'll get this mag. Hopefully it hasn't been power crept. You can put it on with your build and use it to go kill something. And if it proves to be not as good as, or not that substantially better than just three Tempests that give you that element or three event mags or three whatever, then hopefully it was all well worth it and spent accordingly. Like, it's such a... Like, because not many people have this and have demonstrated it and said, Hey, I did a video, I used this mag, I used this setup, and I was able to just melt this boss. Since we don't have that kind of conclusive evidence that says, Hey, this really, really works. It's OP. It's infinitely better than anything else you could possibly do. Because God forbid you go into Miyamoto and you use Sepulchre Force. But maybe mod with Sepulchre Force is good. Maybe that's super duper awesome. But, you know, it really depends on what you have, what you don't have, and what you're using it for, and what you need it for. Like, there's so much that goes into it. Oh. Like, this, this is like an infinite cycle of, you know, it's not, um, it's not omnipotent. It's not... Like, a Tempest is omnipotent. It's going to work everywhere unless your element is... You're getting reamed by whatever your negative is. Then you got to step back and change yourself. But in every other scenario, it works just fine. You know, for most cases. Um, okay, so... Ultimately, and I probably said this eight times now... If... You want to go out of your way and you're prepared to do every single step that has to go into getting these mags, getting the shisks, rolling the OC, you know, farming Druma points every month, etc, etc. Running the risk of putting in money and not getting your item at all. You want to run all those risks and do all that work, put all that effort into it, finally craft this thing and make sure your build works with it and it's great. If you're prepared to do all that, and everything works, but in the end, let's say it's not that good, because there's no conclusive evidence of how powerful it is. I crashed. Fuck. 